a look to the market moves on the back of some results as well. And we're joined now for that by Chris Conway from the Australian Stock Report. He's in our Melbourne studio. Chris, welcome. Volatility reigns. So this rally today, uh, can, we, can we sustain it? And more importantly, are you liking the fundamental moves uh, from reports this morning? Uh, good morning, guys. I think, Carson, yeah, look, that's the million-dollar question. Is the rally sustainable? On uh, recent history, one would say, who knows, I guess. Uh, you know, there's been some mornings where we've been expected to have uh, absolute horror show days and the market's rallied uh, and, of course, vice versa. So, look, I, I'm, not, I'm not brave enough to guess. Uh, the message that we've been delivering to clients who are traders is to stay on the sidelines uh, during extreme volatility events like this. Look, there's every chance that you're going to get your face ripped off if you uh, try and be a hero. And for our longer term investors, we've been advising that perhaps now uh, after the sell-off, um, with uh, forward PEs coming back to historical averages and some uh, grossly oversold stocks, now is the time to maybe leak some money, not all money, back into the market. So okay. there are some opportunities Okay, there. where are those opportunities then? Share them with us because, I mean, obviously it's got to be quite a stock-specific play at the moment. Yeah, well, look, BHP for one. I, I was on the uh, show a couple of weeks ago saying BHP down at $22 was uh, probably a buy. Got very close to that. I think it traded at around $22.40 and has bounced. Um, the banks are grossly oversold. Look, they're the main ones, um, but there are other pockets of the market as well. And, of course, you know, companies that are, have reported well um, have kicked on as well. You say, you say banks grossly oversold. The, the other argument is that they were grossly overbought to start with. <laughs> Uh, yeah, market swings uh, swings uh, too far in both directions, Carson. I think this time so they've the gone too somewhere far in the, the middle. Side. Exactly right. Exactly right. It's a mean reversion trade. 100% right. So they've gone too far. Uh, but look, it all depends a little bit on, uh, of course, what China does. Uh, in, indeed, coming online today at 11.30 and what they do moving forward with controlling their economy and controlling their market. Uh, and of course, it also depends on what happens in the US. Uh, the Fed lift off, uh, the rate lift off is now very unlikely, I think, to happen in September. Probably won't happen this year. Um, and that should see markets rally. It's very interesting dynamics overnight. I was really interested to see that as soon as someone said that the uh, September rate hike was off the table, all of a sudden the party's back on. So maybe Wall Street gaming the Fed. Who knows? It's been so well prepared for, though. We've heard so much from Janet Yellen. It's surprising to hear that that would have been, you know, off the cards. I mean, the, 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 there's such a surprise that that would be well, sort that's, of coming indeed, up, though. But that, that move that Chris talked about, is it, <laughs> that of it in itself is, is disconcerting because it implies that there's been no uh, real maturity in the market's development on, on preparing for uh, the likelihood. They just, they're just back to their old ways. Did they miss the chance, yeah, Chris, so, as well? I, I think so. It's all been fueled by the market rally has been fueled by this cheap money, and obviously Wall Street doesn't want it to be turned off because it's been so lucrative for them. But it's a huge deal. It really is a huge deal. And to be perfectly honest, it's probably a bigger deal even than I thought it was. Um, you know, just again looking at the move overnight, based on those comments, I can't remember which Fed member it was that uh, did make the comments. But geez, what a rally we've seen! All right, let's talk reporting season here at home. Bring it back home because Boral is yep. off by close to eight percent this morning. Five dollars seventy nine. Bit of a shocker for that one today, but it's all about the US business. You say you could see further upside in Borrell. Yeah, potentially as the US, uh, US housing recovery continues. I think the thing that uh, is the reason why we're seeing the 5% uh, sell-off today is, the, you know, reading through the, the commentary on their construction division into 2016, um, it was pretty bearish. You know, they're, they're not looking for any significant growth, cement, construction. Um, so I think that's what's weighing on, uh, weighing on investors today. But yes, if the US continues to recover uh, the housing sector, they do have fairly significant exposure to the US. So there could be some upside there. Obviously not guaranteed, but I think that's, what's, that's something that um, investors can look to the future for with regard to borrow. And the, the cost lines as well, their expenses, there's, there's no flagging of future uh, improve on that score. It's pretty much stuck where it's at. Is that, that yeah, exactly that, yeah. right. I think... Yeah, the, the only thing that was good out of the numbers was, was the margin expansion. Um, obviously, revenues were down 15%, but they, uh, they delivered an NPAT above what they got just a few, uh, few months ago, um, and that was because of the margin expansion. If they continue to do that, they'll be OK. But, yeah, the outlook for growing revenues, uh, I think, is the big worry. Yep. All right, Chris, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, guys.